Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And we're gonna start this video with an item I do not recommend buying. This is a power meter that has been sitting in my mailbag basket for over a year now, if not more. And uh, these past few days I powered it on for the first time and I realized it's not very useful. And that's because the accuracy is pretty bad on this. It does claim to measure up to 130 amps, which would probably make it okay for some high current measurement. And I, I believe that was the original reason I got this to measure some brushless motor power consumption at various loads. But if we're talking about currents below five amps, the accuracy is pretty crappy. So I wouldn't recommend you get something like this unless you need to measure these uh, uh, very high currents does do various measurements of power energy and capacity and it cycles through these readings on screen but there is no way of user input so it's pretty basic in terms of functionality i'm pretty sure there are better tools available right now that can do a better job and speaking of a better job if you need some pcbs dance check out the sponsor of this video pcbway.com because nobody does a better job than them at providing high quality circuit boards with excellent customer service and affordable prices they even have advanced capabilities for those of you working on high-tech boards next up i have various nfc tags and these are 13.56 uh, megahertz and I have them in, in different styles these are sticker types uh, these are some key tag type and I basically wanted to experiment with the uh, different uh, sizes and shapes to see what kind of uh, distance from the reader I can get which with each one of these uh, for example I'm expecting to get a uh, uh, higher reading distance with one of these which has a higher diameter on the antenna and I know NFC is supposed to be used for near field communication but I'm interested in building a system that would work at about 10 centimeters of distance and be able to penetrate a glass door for example so uh, there are long range NFC systems I know but I'm afraid those are at the other far end of the spectrum they're kind of massive they use a lot of power they're expensive and they're supposed to work at meters of distance I just need some form of uh, authentication that will work at about 10 centimeters I'm also looking at BLE but then the software side of things gets a bit more complicated to implement uh, on a host and on the server side as well and I'll probably be sharing more details about this project once I have managed to gather some more data Next, I got myself one of these three millimeter uh, cable puller uh, thingies. This will help pull cables inside the tubing. And this one is just five meters long, but I wanted to have a thinner one for short distances, uh, thin wiring. I also have a longer, thicker one that can be used for electrical wiring work, uh, but this one was pretty cheap, so I wanted a second, smaller tool that I can use for smaller jobs, maybe uh, working on the car. And as usual, uh, you will find links for all of these items uh, below the video in the description. Next up, I wanted to upgrade my microSD card storage box, and contrary to what you might believe, I don't use uh, these micro SD cards for shooting videos at least not for the YouTube channel uh, those who have been following me for a long time already know that I'm shooting videos on an iPhone so I don't need any external storage for that but I do use uh, micro SD cards for other stuff like uh, single board computers Raspberry Pis uh, 3d printing uh, GoPro action cameras uh, DVR recording on my RC planes in the microscope camera for image capturing in the thermal camera for image capture and various other pieces of gear uh, that do data logging so i do have a lot of micro sd cards and this new box is capable of holding eight micro sd cards plus eight full-size sd cards and it's it's fairly solid it's made out of plastic and it closes fairly tight but there is no o-ring or anything like that so i'm pretty sure it's not waterproof it's just shockproof so i can toss this in my backpack and uh, it will keep my memory cards safe and secure next i got another interesting uh, tweezer set from mechanic 
and I think I'm a bit crazy here uh, and I'm starting to collect these be because uh, as you know I have ordered nice uh, tweezers before uh, I also have this one from a previous mailbag video but I don't really use it even though it's nice good quality tweezer I just don't use it because it's the nicest one I have so for the daily tasks I still use like the uh, cheaper uh, Vitus uh, tweezers and I'm just wondering if any of my viewers have the same habits let me know in the comments so this one is a, a bit longer than your um, average uh, tweezers you can see when when compared to a standard uh, vitus tweezer but it doesn't really add that much uh, weight partly because it's uh, very thin and partly because it has these uh, perforations which help keep the weight down and the tips on on this guy are super sharp and thin and it comes painted with this uh, really nice blue color you'll find the link for this in the description below the video and while you're in there you might as well smash that like button i ordered a bunch of these uh, cheap one meter long k-type thermocouples and the problem with these cheap ones is that the uh, braiding the insulation on these is not of good quality and it kind of gets charred pretty fast even at you know let's say 200 degrees celsius but i'm not too worried about the longevity of these guys i just need a bunch of thermocouples for an upcoming video where i will be doing some measurements on the reflow oven so they'll only be used a couple of times and i think they will work fine for that purpose but more on that subject in a future video all i can say is that I already have the PCBs in charge of the measurement system which I designed. I just need to assemble them and write some firmware before I can shoot the video. Next up I have some screw type terminals but with no screws. Uh, these are some uh, push type connections and I wanted to give these a try. Here is the part number if anyone is interested in these. I believe there could be several manufacturers that offer them, uh, but what I have here is of course a low cost option uh, got from AliExpress, but putting that aside, everything uh, seems to be moving towards these push type connectors these days. I mean, especially in electrical wiring, fuses, quick con connectors and other, uh, you know, uh, accessories, all of the new models are with push type connections and it kind of makes sense uh, because these push connectors don't depend on how much the user torques a particular screw connection um, it just has a spring that will provide the required clamping force always and repeatedly and this particular model is rated for 10 amps 250 volts up to one square millimeter wire size but as always take these maximum ratings with a grain of salt and design with adequate reserve Next up, I got myself one of these fancy Xiaomi cigarette lighter chargers, but this one is a bit special because it has a USB Type-C output uh, up to 20 volts and 5 amps with a limit of 68 watts. So if you need 20 volts, uh, you're only going to get a uh, maximum of uh, 3.4 amps. But that would be good enough for charging my Lenovo X1 Carbon Netbook. And this is really the main reason for getting one of these. So uh, uh, let, let me set up a quick test fixture so we can see this guy in action. Until I do that, let me quickly mention that inside the box it, it comes with this uh, rather thick and good quality USB Type-C cable. So I, I would imagine this uh, cable is good for the... Uh, rated 68 watts um, on the USB Type-C port. Unfortunately, I do not have my uh, Lenovo laptop uh, with me to test if this is charging at uh, power delivery 20 volts, uh, but we're gonna have to trust Xiaomi. I mean, they sell good quality products and uh, there's no reason to believe uh, this is not going to meet the spec. I can't wait to test this, uh, but I'll just have to uh, grab my laptop from the uh, other office and test it. Uh, what I can do is uh, to plug in this USB tester and it has a protocol detection. It shows us that it supports um, QC 2.0 up to 12 volts, QC 3.0, a bunch of other protocols for Huawei, Samsung, Apple and Type-C power delivery. So that's all I can test right now. Uh, a nice thing I noticed is that the charger does have this uh, ring light, which is uh, this light blue when it's not in use. And it 
turns green when I insert something into the uh, USB Type-C port and the overall build quality is just very nice on this uh, on this guy. I believe it's an aluminium body and it, it's just top quality. I really like it. Next, I got myself a set of these mesh filters. I believe these are usually intended for paint jobs, uh, but I was thinking if maybe I could use these for filtering the liquid I use in my ultrasonic cleaner. After running a bunch of boards through a cleaning process, you're left with some flux residue gunk, but the liquid is still good. So I first tried to filter it using some coffee paper filters, but unfortunately it goes very slow through those and at some point they just seem to clog and start stop flowing. So I'm hoping these mesh filters will do a better job uh, but still keep the gunk in the filter. I haven't tried them yet but they were cheap enough so I ordered the set. I'll probably let you know if these work okay or not in a future video where I, I will be using my ultrasonic cleaner. Next I got myself a couple of uh, wire strippers and this yellow one seems to be a bit more advanced. I mean it has a higher number of blades uh, let me count the blades on this guy. There's one, two, three, four, five blades uh, on this yellow stripping tool. And this is designed in general for round wiring like Ethernet cable, CAT5, CAT6 or coaxial cable like RG59 and uh, other types. But it also has uh, this uh, area here for stripping a flat cable. The gray one is a bit simpler, it only has a uh, single blade in here, but they both feature this uh, uh, plastic piece which can slide in and out and if you switch this on, on a different side, it, it creates a different diameter in here for uh, you to uh, be able to cut on a different uh, diameter cable. I'm not sure if one of these does a better job than let's say the single blade you have on an, a, a RJ, RJ45 crimp tool but if you have a bunch of cables to crimp then it might make sense to have a dedicated wire stripping tool. Uh, you go and strip all the wires then you go back and crimp them with a second tool. I haven't used one of these so far, I don't know how good they are, uh, but they were fairly cheap so I decided to give them a try. Given how, how many adjustments you have in here, you can probably set these and um, obtain some decent results with them. And the last item in today's video is this cheap side cutter tool and I keep one of these uh, cheap ones around every point of interest which is the 3D printing table, another one for the main workbench, in fact here, here is the one I keep on the workbench and um, another one for the office desk, another one in my portable tool set and a higher quality one in my main toolbox. But I can't afford keeping high quality ones for each of these spots so I choose to keep a cheap one for each one of these locations where I usually just need to snip some very thin wires. And as you would expect from a cheap one, the uh, metal quality on these is uh, pretty poor. The blade is going to fail uh, soon if you start cutting anything other than thin copper wires. But for the most part, for the work that I do, the blade on these lasts pretty well. That is of course due to the uh, thin copper wires that I use these on most of the time. That was all for today. I hope this was interesting to watch and you found something useful to order in this video. As usual, links for all of these items will be provided in the description below the video. I will also link on screen a playlist with all of my other mailbag videos. If you want to check out some of my previous videos, don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to keep these videos coming. Also, check out the Tindy store link below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.